Now we're going to look at thermal physics, which should take six hours of class time. We're going to start with the equation of state, PV is equal to nRT. We're going to look at thermodynamic processes, which is basically looking at PV diagrams. Looking at work done, defining work done, uh, the conservation of energy. PV diagrams, we'll be doing a lot of those. And then we're moving on to the second law of thermodynamics, which is um, that heat goes from hot to cold. And then we'll finish with entropy. State the equation of state for an ideal gas. This is the equation of state. You may have seen it before. PV is equal to nRT. P is the pressure in pascals. The volume is the volume in meters cubed. N is the number of gas molecules. R is the gas constant. T is the, the absolute temperature. Now, this mathematically means that if we keep the pressure the same and we keep NR the same, if we double the volume, we also double the temperature. Or if you keep the volume the same, if you double the pressure, you will double the temperature. This is the mathematical relationship. Or if you keep NRT the same, all this is kept the same, and therefore PV is going to be a constant. If you increase P, you must decrease V. In fact, if you double P, you must halve V. So, P and V will be inversely proportional. So this inverse proportionality graph means that if you double P, the volume will be halved. Um, we know that either the volume or the pressure will be proportional to the temperature, which means if you double the temperature, you will either double the pressure or double the volume. But the product, in, in, in any case, will be doubled. Describe the difference between an ideal gas and a real gas. Now, you should know that um, a, a real gas actually behaves similar to an, an ideal gas in most cases. Um, but not always. You should know that um, ideal gases cannot be liquefied. Basically, you know that with an ideal gas, there are no forces between the particles except when they collide. In other words, there's no concept of potential energy. There's no forces between the particles as they approach each other. In other words, the process that would make them condense from a gas to a liquid. Now, a graph of V against T using the ideal gas equation is, is the volume is proportional to the temperature. V is proportional to T for a straight line graph through the origin. This is proportionality. But you know that in a real gas, when it gets to a certain temperature, it will, uh, will turn into a, a, a liquid. Uh, and this dark line here is the behavior of a real gas, not of an ideal gas. An ideal gas would just be proportional, would just go straight to zero. So a real gas will uh, liquefy at some point when the temperature is cold enough. In other words, the volume is not proportional to the temperature with a real gas. Now this is an experiment that, that can be done. We have one set of these. If you change the temperature of the gas in here by basically putting it in this water bath and heating it, the temperature of the water, let's assume, is the same as the temperature of the gas in here, and the pressure will change. You know that as you increase the temperature, the pressure will increase. And you'll get a pattern which looks a bit like this. It's not a straight line graph through the origin, however, it's just a straight line graph. So it's all the form, form y is equal to mx plus c. And this is what the line will look like. Now, we have to describe the concept of absolute zero um, of temperature and the Kelvin scale of temperature. Now, we just discussed this, that we have this straight line which goes through the, this, uh, the, the pressure axis like this. If we extended this line, in other words, extrapolated, we, ext we extend the line beyond the range of points. Imagine the line extended further to the left, it will carry on down and down and down. What effectively happens here is that the temperature will get so cold that the pressure will go to zero. 
The only reason a, the pressure can go to zero is if there are no collisions between the particles and the sides of the walls. In other words, the particles have effectively stopped moving. They have an, a minimum amount of energy. They co they're not even colliding with each other or with the sides of the walls. And this happens at minus 273. This is basically the coldest temperature we can possibly obtain. However, this idea that we have this straight line graph which intercepts the pressure axis is not um, mathematically so nice to deal with. If we were to redefine the axes and made this proportional, we can say that this vertical axis, pressure axis, could go through instead of zero, which is the po the, uh, the centigrade uh, temperature, which um, just coincides with the freezing point of water. We, we can redefine temperature as being the lowest temperature we can possibly achieve. So if we move the axes to the left, now we have a different situation. Now we have a straight line graph which goes through the origin because we basically redefine the axes. So we basically start the new temperature scale at zero, which is equivalent to minus 273 Celsius. We'll call this absolute zero. So we can call this zero degrees absolute or zero Kelvin. So this is a new Kelvin, a new scale that we have. So that's at zero Kelvin but we'll make each degree the same size as the Celsius degrees. So we go up 273 to 0 and up another 100 to 373 further up. So now we have pressure is proportional to temperature because we're only in the Kelvin scale, not in the Celsius scale. Absolute zero is the temperature which is so cold that the particles in an ideal gas have the lowest possible energy level. It means they have stopped moving effectively. The pressure goes down to zero. And this is the coldest possible temperature we can achieve. Now I have a question for you to do. The pressure of a gas inside a cylinder is 300 kilopascals. If the gas is compressed to half its original volume, so the volume is halved, and the temperature rises from 23 degrees centigrade to 323 degrees centigrade, what will its new pressure be? Now you can try this solution. You know that PV is equal to NRT. We both divide both sides by T, so PV over T is going to be a constant value. Next, PV over T before is equal to the PV over T at the end. So now you basically have to substitute the values of PV and T and then you will get the final value for the pressure. So the answer is 1,200 kilopascals.